Vandaag in een nieuwe Spelers Home een gesprek met een van de langzittende PSV-spelers van het moment. Hij heeft inmiddels zijn leven opgebouwd met zijn gezin in Eindhoven en is niet meer weg te denken uit de basis. Olivier Boscagli. So it's your fifth season now. So you're very loyal. Yeah. <laughs> Can I conclude that you enjoy being here? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Sure, sure, sure. Five years is a, is a long in a football career. Because you know everybody, uh, everybody knows that the football career is quite small. So five years is a lot, but yeah, I think I enjoyed the last five years a lot here. So this is why I'm still here also. So it was a big pleasure for me to, to spend my last five years here. So you played under four different coaches uh, and you know that everything can be different yeah. within a club due to a coach. How did you experience the four periods? Yeah, it was sometimes hard, sometimes good. But then I think that I learned a lot from the, from the old coaches. When I arrived, it was a bit uh, yeah, difficult for me because, uh, of course, there was a change of life for me. Everything was totally different. And, uh, yeah, of course, every time, sometimes you have like different kind of uh, view about football. And, uh, yeah, when I arrived here, it was uh, a bit of a hurry because we were, we were missing a left back. So I have to make the job in the left back. And it's not my, uh, my best position. So I tried to deal with it, but it was not so good. Also, the team was not working well so we get some troubles then we switch the coach in the middle of the year so it's also so difficult to to deal with it and then yeah this year I had to learn a lot because yeah it was difficult football for me but then I learned also on myself and I tried to yeah I worked every day to be better and then yeah at the end it works well for me the year after because yeah we had a new coach and yeah we had a maybe a I say same views about football, about uh, tactics. So it it fits for me, and it was uh, yeah everything gone back to zero. So it was opportunity for me to yeah to show to the coach what can I do and on my best position also. So then the next two years after with the with Schmidt was uh, yeah was top for me because uh, I play on my position. We play uh, yeah the second year we play all European football. We were fighting for the for the championship. We didn't get it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. We were still uh, on the um, on the race, so it was really nice, really intense. And then, yeah, then comes the the injury. So this was uh, a terrible time for me. But I also learned a lot, and I yeah, I know more about myself and everything. And when I came back, it was a different coach. The team was already good. The team was playing, and the eleven was uh, almost uh, the same every week. So it was difficult for me to go inside. And everybody know that uh, yeah, the defensive part is difficult to change because you cannot change every day. Uh, normally, the back four is almost mm -hmm. most of the time the same. So it was difficult for me, and so I have to to grab some minutes. That's what I did. I try to yeah make the best for me and try to yeah just get minutes, minutes. And I knew that yeah, the year after will be better for me because I had a full um, full precision. Of course, a new coach also who then I can also understand more. He has the same also idea of football with me, so it fits really good and fast. And then, yeah, this year it's, uh, it's I think it's the year where I enjoy the most playing football in this team because, yeah, we play fantastic football, qualify for Champions League, uh, still the race for the title. So, yeah, I think this year is where I enjoy the most. But uh, every day, every year I, I learn something different and uh, I think it's also good for my career to see different kind of coaches yeah. and ideas. Yeah, that's a good summary. Yeah, <laughs> a bit long, but good. Yeah, but it, it's a fact, of course, that your performance may vary due to a coach. So um, how do you cope with that personally? Yeah, you have to adapt because uh, diff every coach will ask you some different things. And uh, what I like the most this year is like the coach give me like, of course he has defensive part. I have to make a job, he has an idea. We are a bit similar with this. So I have to, of course we have to follow the rules, I will say. But then with the ball, uh, he knows my quality and he says like, he knows that, yeah, um, I can make some good passes. I can change sometimes the game. So he's. He's, he's leaving me, he's giving me free for this build-up and we, of course we have some tactic, we have some, uh, some schema but for the rest he knows that with the ball I can do my things and he leave me this and give me the opportunity also to, to show myself with the ball and I don't have really like, uh, how you say, it's not PlayStation, he don't tell me yeah, you play left, you mm -hmm. play right, you play. So this is also good for me because I can also show myself like this and then yeah of course we had 
65, 75% of the, of the ball in the game. So this is what I love the most. And uh, yeah, this, uh, this also helps me a lot to, uh, to, to show myself. Yeah. Can you name one thing what you have learned from each coach so that you have uh, seen yourself develop as a player? Yeah, with uh, Van Bommel, what I learned the most is to be a bit more aggressive because I'm a bit, uh, how you say, uh, I'm a nice guy, mm -hmm. I'm uh, e cool, I'm yeah. a cool guy. I'm not the guy who's uh, really aggressive on the ball or on the opponent. And uh, yeah, he as a coach, he's a, he is a coach like he was as a player, aggressive player mm -hmm. in the duels and everything. And uh, I know as a central defender, you have to be aggressive. Because yeah, you have you are the last line, you are the defender, so you also have to show in uh, at your teammates that you are here to help them, and you also have to show to the opponents that they're gonna make uh, they're gonna have 19 difficult minutes. And then yeah, with Schmidt was also it's a bit similar with Peter Bos. It's a bit like uh, yeah, the tactic is really important. He has uh, they also they have two different uh, ideas of football, but it's a bit similar, and they are, the tactic is really important. The focus. I also learned from this to be fully uh, focused for 95 minutes. Yeah, and then with Van Nistelrooy, I didn't, I was not so long with him because yeah. I was a long time uh, in a rehab and I was not, I spent my rehab in France also, so we didn't match each other for a long time. I learned more on me and my body than on the football. In it was, uh, yeah, it was more, yeah, because, um, yeah, it takes me 11 months to, to be back on the pitch, so, I was not really focused about football at this time. I was focused on myself, on my knee, on my head, because it was a really tough moment for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the body is a part, but then the head also is difficult. Every morning I wake up, I want to play football. And for a football player, there's nothing better to be on the pitch. So when you see the other guys playing, enjoying on the pitch, and uh, yeah, I was home. My leg was in the, in the ice, painful. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is one, uh, yeah. This is what's terrible. Is everything? All the injuries is terrible for a football player. So this year I learned a lot about, yeah, pain. About uh, uh, how you say, yeah, the mentality, the mindset. So it's also why now I enjoy uh, every minute on the pitch, maybe more than before. That's beautiful. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So um, I also learned about a lot about the life because uh, football is uh, for me is the most important. But then if you see, I was in a rehab with. Uh, different kind of people. I was not only with sports people and uh, I saw some people who never walk again in their life. So this also makes you more happy to be... I, I had a big injury, but there was nothing next to the people next to me. There was one guy without home, without legs, but he was in a gym every day with me. Mm -hmm. He was a bicy bicycle with like uh, the iron legs, iron uh, arms. And to see these guys fighting every day, it's, yeah, then I cannot complain anymore because yeah. I have... Makes you aware of what you yeah, can Yeah, sure, do. because yeah. I think when I get injured, the world stops for me. It does like a black screen for me, it was terrible. But then I went to this rehab center and I see some people who are fighting just to walk. And this is terrible for them. And mm. when you see them fighting and with the smile every day, then yeah, in my head, it's okay. I can't complain anymore. I have pain in my knee and then yeah. there is nothing next to them so this is what i learned the most and also the coach yeah Van Istelro, he also had it so he knows it so he try also tried to help me to he breaks me a bit because uh, when i came back here i want everything fast i want to play fast i want to be on the pitch fast in the 11 also and he also tried to break me a bit because he knew he knew the situation because he had it also and he knows that yeah this takes a lot of time consequences and he also helps me to make the steps so he was also support for me to to make step by step uh, to be on the pitch. More mental coach yeah, yeah. in that way than other coaches. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, and this year is like, uh, yeah, what I said. Yeah, my, you already said Yeah, it. I yeah. enjoy it a lot and yeah, he learns me every day. Uh, we have, I have to be honest, we also, we almost have the same idea of football. I love this, his football and if one day I'm coach, I think I will, I want to steal his, uh, his book. Yeah. This paper, yeah, this is really, for me, this is football. This oh, is typically wow. football. So I think if one day I'm going to be coach, I, uh, I will get a, a conversation with him to... Shave your head yeah, like Peter no. Boss. <laughs> I, will, I will have a con conversation with him to, to steal his, his ideas because it's really like my idea of football. So why do you love football that much? 
Yeah, what is there's it? something in, inside me. Yeah, it's difficult to explain, mm -hmm. but uh, I think every football player understands it. Not only about uh, professional football player, but uh, if you see also the atmosphere around football, uh, your family, your friends, the kids. Yeah, when I go to the stadium every day, you see the kids, they look at you with the stars in their eyes. And I had the same when I was young. I, went, uh, I was living not so far from the training ground in mm -hmm. Monaco. And a few times my parents bring me there. And when I saw the, the, the players, I was like, yeah, it's a dream for me. And at my home, I break, I don't know how many uh, uh, flower things to shoot some free kicks <laughs> to. I, I break also my, my bed because I was jumping on the bed, uh, celebrating. And yeah, this is something who is inside you. And uh, yeah, I, was, I started football really young. And yeah, this was inside me. And there was no way for me to... To miss the chance to be professional and yeah when you're on the pitch every day you just have the smile every day so this is there's nothing better than to be on the football pitch that's beautiful <laughs> um well there are some tough things as well of course you're in eindhoven for five years and you have seen uh, players come and go you're yeah. a foreigner in the netherlands so i think that is one of the most difficult things in football build friendships and then say mm. goodbye to them yeah, to be honest, this is also difficult because, yeah, of course, you have different situ different uh, relation with the players. But yeah, I made a lot of friends, but then it's difficult because you don't see them for... I, I play one year in France in the second division in Nîmes, and these are almost my best friends in football. But I play nine months with them. And then some maybe there's some guys I didn't saw for two or three years, so it's also difficult. There's a tele... Sorry. There's a telephone, but... FaceTime, but mm -hmm. it's different. Uh, I miss this also. So the good thing here now, we have a lot of guys who can speak French. So this is also good for me. We missed a lot also. Yeah. I was a big relation with Ibi, for example, Sangare. And yeah, this was really hard because, yeah, we had, uh, I think, three, four years, yeah, three years really together. I think uh, I helped him from the first minute he was here. And uh, yeah, I make a lot of him for him. He helps me a lot also. So, yeah, we had a really good relation and it's difficult to say goodbye to these friends. But when I see also for him was a big step and I'm also happy and proud of him. Mm -hmm. So I try to follow him still. We still we are still some contact sometimes. He just won the African yeah. Cup. So, yeah, this is... Uh, Have you seen the final? Yeah, I watched the final at home. So it's really, yeah, it's just proud of the, of the, of the guys. And I think that if this year we begin champion, he will be really proud. And he's maybe with the guy where I will call the first... I'm also friends with everybody here, Dutch guy, Spanish guy, it doesn't matter for me. But there's something every time when you, so your own language is a bit different. And uh, of course, you can make different kind of jokes that you cannot translate it. We have so many jokes in French that we can translate, so it's easier also. And when you have to, for example, for EB, uh, I learned him a lot because he's the guy who keeps his emotion for him. Mm -hmm. And I am also this guy who don't want to show emotion. But sometimes you have to. And to explain what's inside you, you cannot explain in a different language, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we had a conversation with a coach or with anybody, there's no, uh, no easy way to, to explain in your own language. And nowadays, when you talk to the TV, for example, if you say, if you say one mistake in a different language, that it will follow you the rest yeah. of your career. So... Yeah, the language is a big part of a friendship also, but yeah, there's, uh, there's something you have to deal with it also because uh, you're with 25 different guys in the team. So you also have to be, yeah, you don't have to be friendly with everybody, but you have to make sure that you are nice to each other. Yeah. So the language is also a part of it because yeah, now almost everybody speaks English, but you also have to make sure that you don't leave some guys on the side because they don't speak the same language. And this is what I try to do also by myself because I'm one of the oldest here. So I try to make sure that everybody is welcome also and feel welcome. Mm -hmm. And I think that this year we did it great because I think there's no one player who will tell you that, yeah, is not, is not feeling good in this team. Even the guys who didn't play so many times uh, this year. So this is what makes us uh, strong yeah. and this way what we can show on the pitch. Yeah, you really look like a, a team. Yeah, it's but nice it is, this is a fact. It's not only yeah, yeah, about yeah. what you people see. People only see the pitch and the interviews. But uh, when, when I'm inside and I can see that, yeah, we're really enjoying and there's nothing uh, fake. Mm -hmm. 
So would you describe yourself as a guide within the team that for the yeah. foreigners as well go to uh, Eindhoven, uh, grab a coffee? Uh, yeah, or not, not, not a guide, but oh, of course, sometimes some people ask me for like, uh, yeah, hairdresser, restaurant, so things like this, but not a guide. But uh, people know that I'm here for a long time. I know the club. I know almost everybody in the club, in the yeah. stadium. So I also can help them with this. And yeah, everybody knows that, uh, yeah, if they need anything, I'm, I'm also here to, to help them. There's more guys who know better Endoven than me, maybe, maybe but yeah, for the, maybe for the foreign players, it's also easier for me to, yeah, to show them the yeah. Eindhoven and to explain how the club works. And the rest of the Netherlands? Yeah, Have also, you been there as well? Yeah, I've players? been there also, but yeah, it's different because it's not my, uh, my city, but yeah. yeah, I also try to discover a lot the country because it's it's not a big country, so you can do everything by, by, by car and with my girlfriend, we try to, yeah. I don't want to go, I don't want to live one day and to miss something to see in Holland. So we try to discover a lot. And the windmills and yeah. stuff. <laughs> but what do you think of the Netherlands? Because it's quite different than, yeah, the, yeah. than Monaco. To be honest, this, uh, if you put the weather on the sides, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah? Really, yeah. It's, uh, how you say? It's cool. It's a bit representative like me. It's like cool people, are cool. Down to they, earth, maybe? Yeah, they are, they are not, yeah, maybe we are a bit more stressful sometimes in the life. And uh, I'm a guy who just enjoying every day. So, yeah, some, okay, you cannot be, everybody cannot be nice, but it's every time some people are a bit stupid. But <laughs> this of is, course. and everywhere <laughs> in the world is like this. But yeah, we enjoy. I just go to grab a coffee outside with my wife. Sometimes bring my son to the daycare and take a small uh, coffee or uh, breakfast. People are cool, easy. Yeah. They ask you sometimes for a picture, but they are really uh, respectful. This is what I like the most because I can give some time to the people. I know that it costs me sometimes two minutes in my life. There's nothing. But then people give you back this and this is what I like. They are really respectful. When they see me, they ask me every time if it's possible. They don't just come to you and mm -hmm. grab you and try to make something. And the language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five years only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, I learned for maybe four months. The yeah. first year when I came here, then yeah. was the COVID. So we stopped the lessons. And we had some uh, teachers before, so it's also easier. And then, yeah, unfortunately, we had a German coach. So he was speaking English. And he brings a lot of German guys, so yeah. the Dutch guy was a bit less. So we didn't have to learn, I will say, the mm. Dutch. This is a bit of a mistake for me that I didn't, I stopped. I almost, yeah, I, I understand a lot when people speak slowly, but it's difficult for me to talk. But yeah. Adri? Yeah, Adri, I have to speak Dutch with Adri. M. Yeah, who will pack you, eh? M, as you I'm a little young. I'm a little bit of it's also good for me because it forced me to speak Dutch and yeah. Uh, yeah, for the football things, for the cloths, it's okay. I can, I can explain myself, so it's okay. sometimes they make jokes because my Dutch is not good. But uh, yeah, you understand me, so this is the most important. But do you think it's the funniest word? Yeah, it is. Yeah, the first the first word I learned was klootzak. <laughs> <It's the, laughs> yeah, really? it's the, fir the first word when I learned is everywhere you go when you go to French, they 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 also <laughs> tell you the the bad words in the first. So yeah, no, but yeah, there's also like uh, some really difficult words to say, like the shim parts, the beschemen schemen, schemen schemen schemen. Yeah, that yeah, is impossible Ooh. for me to say. One time, you start with schemen schemen. Yeah, this is. Yeah, oh, almost. Yeah, Schemer, so Schemer. yeah, it's, it's really difficult. But yeah, as a French guy, it's difficult to say it because it, also the G, the mm -hmm. S, C, H, all this stuff is difficult. So I try to I say in English, and I'm yeah, sure English is perfect. Yeah, do you perfect. feel like a Dutchman a little bit? Mm, yeah, without the language, yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, because I also how you say? Yeah, I feel like home here, and this is the most important for yeah. me. Doesn't matter where you go, where you live. I feel home, so this is more important for me. I feel welcome from everybody. I have a good neighborhood. I have a good everybody in the club. Yeah, I respect everybody. Everybody respect me. This is. I feel really welcome here. I feel home, so this yeah. is the most important for me and my family. Yeah, great. Well, you adapted one thing. 
Yeah. Oh ja, yeah. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. <laughs> Macht bellen om een lampje te vervangen. Yeah. Three, oh, yeah. two, uh, I see his pick. one, <laughs> go. Let me check. Yeah, Holly. 100%. Yeah, if I need something. Yeah, yeah if, I get, if I get a problem with my car, I just call it. What car? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> he's saying what car. No, this is, hey, no, this is really... Hey, he said what car. I never said car. Whoa. Hey, you're a Every day. Up. Every day. Yeah. These guys. So, you cycle every day. Yeah, almost. The, Only almost when the weather is not possible, but... Okay, but to the head. Why is that? Yeah, I live close by, so it is also easier for me. And yeah, everybody tell me when I go to to Holland, this bicycle country. So yeah, for me, it's, I, I also like because you have the fresh air in the morning. This is good. Yeah, sometimes a bit cold, but well, I like it. It takes, it's easy, it's, uh, how you say? It's uh, for me, bicycle is, I take more, less time in bicycle than coming yeah. by car. So. So yeah, the other players are lazy, right? Yeah, not lazy, but I can understand <laughs> when you live far away, I can understand. If I was yeah. living in uh, 25 minutes or by car, then I can understand that you don't want to bike for a long time. But for me, it's maybe seven, eight minutes of bicycle. So, yeah, I like it. Sometimes yeah. I met some people in the, in the, in the bus. Yeah, in the, yeah <laughs> the bus. The yeah, some, some mornings I just stop. I see some, some dogs that I, I, I know, some people I know. <laughs> really? so, so, yeah, it is also funny. Fun. And at the end, it's good for the earth. Yeah. It's good it, for the planet. It is. <laughs> yeah, great. No, no, Did you cycle just, a lot in Monaco as well? Uh, no, no, because Monaco is a bit like, it's not hills, but a uh, lot of high. And, and there's no uh, uh, cycling, uh, not so much cycling ways. Mm -hmm. It's only um, uh, cars. So it's also can be dangerous also. What is the significant difference for you and your wife? Because she Yeah, has it's to like is my wife is the same. Yeah, so the the um, the simple Eindhoven and the luxury Monaco. But yeah. You are a football player, but for her Yeah, but she's yeah, the thing is everybody has a for me a fake a wrong uh, view of Monaco. Because for everybody, Monaco is money, luxury, uh, boats, Ferrari. And this is what people see. Of course, there is, mm -hmm. there is some money. Everybody knows there is nice cars. The, there's the sea, there's everything. But around this also, the Monegasque people, my wife is Monegasque, and Monegasque people there, they are like me and you, there's normal people. And the, the half of my friends, they are not rich. They are normal people. And... Uh, yeah, of course it's different because you don't have the luxury that you have here. Mm -hmm. But it's also nice to have this diff these two parts because I know when I go home, I have this, I have the sea, I have the beach, I have the the swimming pools, I have the casino, the nice restaurants. So I enjoy it a lot. To be honest, I enjoy it because I like it. But I also know that yeah, when I come back here, it's a bit different. But also, there's good restaurants. There's okay. There's not the sea for me. Nando, mm -hmm. and this is what I miss also a lot. And the sun, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, but, but you, yeah, your child is growing up here as well. Do you yeah. think it's that isn't a pity that she no. that he? Uh, no, I will. Be, as as a kid, I will be happy to 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 born here and to grow up here because okay. my son is enjoying every day. I think he's going to the farm. Is uh, yeah, in Monaco we miss also this a bit because we have. Uh, Beton everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's not a big. There's no place for farm. So oh, there's a small one, but it's different. And here, every, everything is flat. I go sometimes with my son bicycle in the in the forest. I go to the farm. I go to playgrounds, and we miss this. To be honest, to be in Monaco, okay. I go maybe two or three times a, a week at the farm. And yeah, he's enjoying uh, recognizing the turtles, uh, the sheep, the the cows, and this is. When I see him enjoying like this, I also miss this a bit mm -hmm. in my childhood. But yeah, it's different. Yeah. Uh, I was playing football every day, so I didn't. Yeah. I also enjoyed a lot. But when I see my son enjoying like this, the second one also maybe will enjoy. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> so, the second one. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We are waiting for uh, really? another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, congrats. So thank you. It's for uh, soon. So okay. He will also born in in normally in Eindhoven. So. Yeah, if if I have to make it again, my um, I will make it again here because it's just, it's I know that he's enjoying a lot and this is he has a smile every day. Yeah. This is the best thing for me to see. Do you think it's harder to be 
a dad or winning the championship? Oh. <laughs> yeah, to be a dad is coming like this. I was not, to be honest, I was not ready for this. No? No. I tried to be ready. My, my wife was ready already. She worked with kids. She know everything. She's really like, like this. She knows everything. And for me, it was like, yeah, from zero to 11, mm -hmm. to uh, 100, sorry. It was oh, from one day I have to take care of something and it is mine. This come from me and this was for me a uh, big change of my life. But then there's nothing what I, I'm more proud of him. This, uh, yeah, there's something you can explain also. And uh, to be dad is, it can be difficult because of the nights, because mm. of the sleep, because of, yeah, sometimes he's not happy and he show you. But yeah, I think there's nothing, I think it's even better than football, to be honest. And yeah, win championship is also really <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I saw it the last five years and this year I think is where we are the closest. Yeah. And uh, of course, it's also really difficult because uh, there's a lot of games, hard games. And uh, we did really great for the moment. And uh, yeah, the next months will be difficult as a dad and as a football player. So yeah, yeah it will be uh, Ooh, tough. Yeah, it's a long, <laughs> uh, long way for both. But yeah, this is... You've got some beds, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, if yeah. needed. No, for my first one, I went to a hotel a few days, uh, the day before the game. For the first months, I went to the hotel because, yeah. It was awake every two, three hours. And uh, yeah, I have to thank my wife for this because she yeah. was incredible. This, um, we had like a kind of uh, schedule. In the beginning of the week, I tried to take care of him. And uh, when it's coming the day games, then she's taking care of the whole nights, yeah. the whole day. So this is was... A real team. Yeah, a different it's, a team kind, it's a kind of yeah. team because, yeah, you know that my manager said to me one thing one day. I didn't listen when I was young, but he said, if you're happy at home, you're happy in your, in your job. And for me, it was not. But you can see that when everything goes well at home, it's way, way easier to, uh, to play football. If at home is difficult, then it's really difficult yeah. on the pitch. And this is why it also makes me uh, better every day because at home is, yeah, my wife helps me a lot for this. So this is, helps me a lot to be a... Uh, to become a champion. To become, yeah, also to become <laughs> champion. No, but it's, yeah. it's right. If, I, if I'm champion this year, yeah, if we are champion this year, I, there's a big part is I have to give to my wife. Yeah. So oh, beautiful. If I get the cup at home, I will cut it yeah? in two to give it her also. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cut it. Uh -huh. No, I will well, cut it. I remember you saying that you uh, will think about leaving PSV when you become a champion. And yeah, anything can this, happen, but yeah. this year, I guess it will happen. So what do you think? Yeah, what I said is, uh, you never know in football what's going to happen the year after. But I say to my manager, mm -hmm. first of all, I want to leave the club with this trophy and this is something was really inside me and what I said to my tra to my manager because we I could leave the years before it it, it will be an it, it it could be an option but yeah I still have this regret that I don't win this championship okay we, we won the cup we won the Schaal, 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 Schaal. Yeah, Schaal. <laughs> but this yeah this yeah. is and I see I talk with some people sometimes or some old players and they explain me the feeling and this is ah, this is nothing better than this. Mm -hmm. So I say to my manager, if I want to leave this club, first of all, I want to win this championship. And then if I have to leave, I will leave with the, how you say, like job done, mm -hmm. a kind of. So it's really a big, big a goal what I have here yeah. with the club. And I hope that this year we can do it. And then, yeah, then we never know. I say to the club, I say to my manager that... I'm not going to leave to leave. If I have to leave, it's to find something who fits me good and where I know I can enjoy football. I'm not going to leave just because, okay, I did five years here. It's nice. I want to see something else. Of course, I want to play to the best team in the world. This is my goal also. Mm -hmm. But I also want to find something who fits me and hear what fits me perfectly. And I want to find something. I want to find a PSV maybe somewhere else one day. And uh, if not... If, if I have to stay 10 years here, I will be more than happy. For me, my manager said to me, if you have to spend 15 years, 10 years in Holland, in PSV, when you stop your career and you look back at it and you play 10 years for PSV Eindhoven, this is top. Okay. It's not, it's not, you, you don't go next, how you say? 
In French, you say, passe à côté. Yeah, you don't miss something. <laughs> yeah, passe à côté. <laughs> yeah. And there's something that, and I agree with him. Mm. If at the end of my career, I played 10 years here, I win the championship, I win everything here. It was a uh, job done, what I said, mm -hmm. and was a success career. It's a success, successful career, and this is what the most important for me also. And we can see that you are happy here because we've got another clip of you celebrating. Mooi, mooi. Ja. Hop. So these celebrations, yeah. it's a, a kind of a thing. He says the bow and arrow and you've yeah, got, I you, what, what is it? To be honest, I have no celebration. And I have a friend who tell me every week, you have to find one if you score goals. But in my, in my head, I'm not the guy who's gonna score. So I, I have to find a celebration. I don't have one. Yeah, I just was. What uh, is it? Was a joke in, uh, in the dressing room, nothing special. Ah, with okay. So yeah, no, but. Yeah, <laughs> this is not my job to score goals, but I scored some, so I have to, I have to find really, I have to find one, and uh, yeah, but this is yeah not important, but it's uh, yeah, you can see that yeah, this is uh, enjoying yeah, enjoying football, and yeah, you seem uh, steady, also seem like a, an ideal son-in-law. <laughs> Maybe yeah, um, you have to ask my mother. No, <laughs> <laughs> can we call her? No, I no but yeah. does a, an Ajax game or? A, another big game bring out something fierce out of you every game you have a little bit of it's not fierce it's like good stress i call it good stress mm -hmm. because this kind of big games you know there's something behind there's more than a football you know for the club and for the supporters there's a kind of derby and uh, of course there's every time a bit sometimes special yeah but for me it's stays football yeah I think Ajax is one of, is the club we maybe I can I played against the most. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many games we play against them already. But yeah, this kind of game. This is also why you play football to play this kind of games, Champions League games. Uh, um, I call it yeah, the big games in the league mm -hmm. like this is important games, really important games. But you have to keep fresh in your head and keep focused. And I try. I have to be behind. I have to be the guy who show also the example to be stable in this kind of games because if the guy look behind and you see this guy with stress or guy with hungry and all these kind of things it's not good no. so also as a central defender i also have to show to my team that also i'm here also to make it stable and to balance the team and this is what i try to do but so when you are angry on the pitch <laughs> <laughs> do you purposely speak french then so no one can understand you to be honest, I'm not really angry on the pitch. Mm -hmm. I, I am sometimes, but yeah. But not as a not at all. Good. Yeah. If I have to say something bad, I say in French because then or I'm. Clothes up. Yeah. No, but to be honest, yeah. This is for me. It's far away from. Sometimes yeah. I get some bad words from strikers, but yeah. Yeah. I, I want to play football. I don't want to talk. And you, mm -hmm. if you if you can watch every time when this is like, uh, not fight, but when everybody comes yeah, arguing. Yeah, yeah. You normally you see me at the other side of the pitch yeah? because for me that means nothing. It's only arguing. Maybe you take a yellow card, stupid yeah. yellow card, and for me this only talks. And two minutes so later on, you just shake your hands. So regarding the supporters, because um, there has been a time that it uh, went not that good, and you can see that through the supporters as well. You are very involved, um, and. Yeah. You can tell it bothers you when supporters react when it's not going good. But when it's go yeah. going good, then you give them extra attention as well. So yeah. what do you think in general of the supporters and their involvement? Yeah. To be honest, first of all, I was a supporter before, before to be a football player. So I understand when the team is not playing good, yeah, <laughs> then you say, yeah, you want... They, I met some people. One day I met, I met a guy in a shop. He tells me... Do you know why I work every day when I wake up in the morning every day? I tell yeah, I don't know. He said, I work I wake up every day in the morning early to pay an abonnement to watch the game every weekend. And this stays till today in my head. So when I see this, it's impossible for me to show a bad image mm -hmm. on the pitch. And I know that sometimes they have to drive three, four hours, maybe more, to watch a game. 
And then, of course, sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Mm -hmm. But the attitude and what we show on the pitch has to be perfect. And it's difficult as a player sometimes to get some whistles. Sometimes it's de deserved, sometimes not. But for them, it's the life and it's inside them. I have the football inside me. They also have the football inside them. And this is how they show. And when we make it good, when we win, sometimes also when we mm -hmm. lose, we get so much support and so much... Uh, good spirits, then the bad things you just mi you just forget it. And I see that when I score my f yeah there was an image when I score my first goal there was everybody was singing my name. This is maybe nothing, but for me it's really important. This is also why I try to give them back what they give me because they are not on the pitch. They cannot play for mm -hmm. us. And we also yeah they don't know I don't know how many people there are maybe 300, 400, 500. And they are making the, the 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 road every one every two weekends, and sometimes they miss their family. They they have to go out because some some people these guys are family also. Mm -hmm. I, I I I leave my family, but they leave their family to support us. And also without I I try to tell them also without them we are nothing. And the club is also the the supporters is the club also, and nothing is more important than the club. So. As a player, I have to show a perfect image on the pitch. Whistle or not, I have to make my job. And when we deserve it, they support us. And this is what's the most important for me. And uh, yeah, I try to be... Uh, how do you say? I try to give them nothing to don't support me. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you understand, yeah, understand yeah, what yeah. I mean. Yeah. I, I, I think, I hope that no one of the supporters can say that I'm a bad guy and you I don't respect them. It's the 12 men. And you know, when we play home, when you have the, you're tired, it's a, a maybe 85 minutes, you have to defend, you have to make a, a slide, you have to score a goal. Okay, there's 30,000 people watching my, uh, shouting my name be behind me, so I have to give them something also. Yeah. Yeah, you can. yeah I love this clip. This, yeah. You see, I enjoy it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is part of the job also. Yeah. And they support you as well when yeah, you got uh, injured, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had the... the, the yeah, every day also when I, when, I, when I was in Maria, when I met some people in the street or somewhere else, they were, oh, when you come back on the pitch, uh, yeah, keep your head up, uh, yeah. yeah. Beterschap. Yeah, beterschap. I get a lot of this. Hey, nice. I get a lot of this. <laughs> I get in my mailbox also, I get yeah. a lot of message and this is, yeah feels you good mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so I'll try to give this back on the pitch yeah we've got some um, youth players yeah. uh, from PSV as well they support you and they want to hello ik ben ik ben Oesman Gassama ik ben 10 jaar ik speel bij PSV onder 11 ik ben Ivana Makela Kunga ik ben 9 jaar oud speel onder 10 hoi ik ben Luca Prostiano ik ben 10 jaar en ik speel bij PSV onder 11 en dit zijn mijn vragen voor Boscagli what for beroep zou je hebben als je geen uh, voetballer bent? If I'm not footballer, what yes. I'm gonna do, huh? Yeah. So the job. Ah, stay in a sport. I was when I was young, I wanted to be uh, how you say? Um, uh, yeah, uh, sports professor. Yeah. In the schools. Yeah, yeah. Because like I was. Yeah. Or not? Not to say. Just uh, play sports with. No, kids. like uh, yeah, oh. uh, and uh, learn them. The sports teacher, the teacher of, uh, yeah, of yeah. teachers, teacher sports. I don't know how to yeah. call this. Because yeah, when I was young, I was really good in the in sports and all, all the sports. I was the best in my in my uh, in my class every time. So I liked it. And uh, sports is really important for kids. And uh, yeah, more now I love kids also. Yeah, they see. Uh, mm -hmm. I had, when I was young, I was a trainer from under nine. Oh really? Yeah, and I was thirteen years old. So we almost had the same age. And if you can give them, this is nothing better. And I have to see with my son now, I'm yeah. like also like as a teacher, I have to chim chim the life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I would, I would like to be, uh, I wanted to be uh, like a teacher of sports when I was young. Okay, <laughs> close. Yeah, almost. <laughs> and who is on the 2-0 to make in the Kuip tegen Feyenoord? <laughs> was a, a release because the, the game was really intense, uh, really demanding. Uh, yeah, uh, it was in the f 
football-wise and mental-wise, was really a lot of pressure there, a lot of noise. Yeah, I scored this goal was top because I knew that uh, yeah, with the 2-0 normally we're going to maybe win because mm -hmm. it helps us. And yeah, kind of release also because uh, the long time I didn't score also before. So yeah, it was top sensation. Yeah, the public was there yeah. also, it was top. Yeah, this f scoring goals is every time incredible. So I don't score a lot, but when I score, I was... I scored some nice goals, so also enjoy it. But yeah, yeah, just re a, a, a kind release, of release. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Comment tu parles bien néerlandais? <laughs> it's um, maybe a funny joke. Yeah, I say every time I speak in Beach in Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, some kids they are not speaking good English sometimes, and they ask me some question. I try to uh, answer in Dutch. So sometimes they understand, sometimes mm -hmm. not. But yeah, yes, sometimes. I, one time I met a, a woman in uh, next to the hospital and she asked me where she has to go. I explained to her in Dutch. Really? She find a way. So okay. I was really proud of me. What was the best player with whom you have in a team? Hebt gevoetbald? He means here or in my career? In your career. Oof. I don't know if you know, yeah, Atem Ben Affa. It's, uh, I played with him in Nice for, I think, one year. Yeah. And he's uh, incredible. He has some, how you say, uh, outside football problems sometimes. Yeah. He played for Newcastle. He played for Hull City also. And then he came back to Nice. He makes, uh, how you say, unbelievable uh, year with Nice when we finished third. And yeah, his, uh, how you say, football quality is incredible. He has to play normally for best team in the world but then he gets some troubles a bit around football but he is the one uh, you also have worn the french national shirt on in the under teams yeah. <laughs> uh, is there a chance you think you will wear yeah, the, there is the a chance. real national team yeah shirt? there is a chance for sure um it, this is also a goal for me it's a dream i wear it many times but not with the the first election I went for all the categories from yeah. under 17 to the under 21. And this is a big, big dream for me. And yeah, one day, let's hope. I hope that, yeah, my name is somewhere maybe. So this, uh, yeah, there's a, there is a, every time a chance and I will play uh, till the last uh, day of my career. I will try to get called by, uh, by the coach. But yeah, it's really tough. Biggest uh, goal for me yeah. in the future, but yeah. I Let, dare let's hope. to dream for you. Yeah, of so, course. Yeah. Let's hope. Well, thank you so much thank for you. this interview. Um, this was a, was a very yeah. nice chat. Thank you. Um, you've got something for the fans as well. Yeah, I bring... Uh, you brought shoes. Some shoes. The shoes I... For the giveaway. Yeah, it's the one I scored against Nijmegen. My first ah. game, uh, my, uh, the game after my injury. Okay. So... A nice story also about it. Yeah, you don't want to keep that. No, that's no? not so important. Okay. Yeah. There you go. One autograph. And now you have long sleeves, but you have a tattoo as well, right? Yeah, I have two. You have two tattoos? Yeah. One at your arm? Yeah, the tiger. Mm -hmm. Oh, means nothing. <laughs> no? Some people ask me sometimes. Yeah, no, it's like, uh, how you say? I thought after your injury, maybe. No, no, it's, uh, how you call this? Like, I was with uh, a national team with uh, Toy Hernandez, mm -hmm. you know, play for Milan. Yeah. And he had the same tattoo at the same place. And we were really good friendship together. Ah. So it's a bit like, uh, how you say? Best friends. Yeah, like <laughs> uh, young things. You yeah, want to yeah, do yeah. like your friends and yeah. We had a, exactly the same uh, draw, so... Yeah. Oh, nice. But then, yeah, this is... But I, li I like it. I like girls it. wear necklaces mm? with... Girls wear necklaces, best friends in necklaces. Yeah, with and we do. I did, yeah, yeah, that yeah, too, yeah. Nice, okay. No, and the other one, I have the name of my son behind my, my arm, so okay. it's really, uh, nice. really nice. Yeah. So, for the giveaway... Yeah. Shoes from Olivier Boscagli. Thank you so much again. Up. Welcome. And, um, Thank you. What I said, dare to dream. Yeah, for the national team. And yes. national team. <laughs> and championship. Yeah. Thank sure. you so much. Thank Thanks. you.